How's it going, everybody? As you can see from the intro, I've been pretty busy. Haven't done a progress update for a little while on the basement home theater uh, build, so thought I'd quickly walk through the changes since the last video and uh, show you the progress, see where we're at with everything. Uh, it's coming right along, so um, let's go take a look at everything and see what's uh, changed and where we're at. Okay, so in no particular order, here's the, the back wall. And as you can see, we've got uh, plenty of electrical outlets across the back. I spaced out four of them. The uh, middle one there is uh, just going to be an outlet that I'm going to be able to put uh, a pass-through cover, I guess you'd call it. Um, I plan to have three these uh, three separate coiled runs here are just speaker wire. Um, they're going to be for the future uh, base shakers that are going to attach to the seating area. So those will end up coming out of that middle box there. Um, so that's what that one's for. But nothing's really changed back here as far as that goes uh, from the last one. We do have our four can lights installed now. Um, they are lights that I found off of Amazon by Lumary. I can post a description. They're Wi-Fi four inch can lights and they're color controlled as you can see from the, the intro there. They were changing color in the background when I was speaking. Um, I also have the, the four can lights here wired to two separate switches. So um, the thought on this was that uh, I can control the two front row or the two back row individually. So you know, when the, when the screen's up, I can turn the front row off, back row stays on, or vice versa. So, for the most part, they're dimmable, um, so you can dim them down. Um, they will also connect to an Alexa device, for example, so you'll be able to control them via voice. So, for the most part, those switches will probably just be on non-stop, and then we'll just control the lights by voice or by app. Um, so that's going to be that. The uh, projector box here now has a cover on it. So let me get up there and show you how that works. So my goal here was that um, I'd be able to have future access up into the soffits if I ever wanted to needed to fish different wires, you know, from the front, uh, maybe down the soffit here um, to where the rack sits. Um, and then fish it back to here. Um, let me open up that cover. I'll show you what else I've got going on. So this is, uh, you know, just opened up about halfway. I'm assuming at this point it's going to hit the back of the speaker. You might be able to go another couple inches, but um, it can also be fully removed. Um, if you pulled the projector completely out, that cover will come out completely. So this gives you access to up above. So there we have our protected outlet that's going to run back to the AV rack and plug into a surge protector. And then it's also going to jump over to this other outlet on the left that will also be surge protected. So we'll have a total of three different outlets up here. Um, planning on that left outlet running the uh, LED strips that are going to be around the track. Um, they're going to sit right down in here and go all the way around the room. Um, and then I also have some uh, Smurf tube that uh, right now is just loose. It's, it's not attached to anything, but um, that's going to be for my HDMI run. Um, so that runs, again, to the rack location. So that is what's going on above the projector box. We're also fixing the uh, HVAC. Um, as you can see, that vent is kind of being blocked a little bit, but our seating area is also going to be, you know, pretty much right under here, and we don't want that blowing directly on us when we're watching anything. So I had uh, my HVAC company come out. They're going to cap this one off completely. And the design that we came up with is there's actually going to be, um, you know, a vent that runs lengthwise this way and disperses the air out you know that way instead of blowing on the seating area so 
Um, if you can see that up there, they've already installed a outlet on the trunk line there, so they're gonna fish it over and I'm gonna have a vent um, probably somewhere in this space and then there'll be another one you know, so it's symmetrical in this side as well. There's the other outlet that it's gonna uh, connect to. So we're gonna have two vents on the sides and get rid of that middle one. So hopefully it heats and cools a little bit better and isn't blowing uh, directly on us. So here's the front wall. Um, as you can see, we've got some electrical boxes way to the left and way to the right. Um, for code, I put a little bit extra wire there right in the middle in case I ever needed to add an extra outlet because those are just over 12 feet apart, I believe is what the code is. So, um, but I really didn't want an outlet directly under the screen, so I'm just gonna have those two on the left and right for now. Uh, still a work in progress. We're not completely done here, but um, I made some pretty good progress the other day in hot gluing the uh, tiles. They're 12 by 12 and they are uh, two inches thick. Uh, found a company online called Foam and More. I can drop a link down below in the description. Um, very nice. They were, you know, sucked down, vacuum packed when they came and every single one of them came back to full shape afterwards. No issues at all. Um, so very happy with these. Thought they were very reasonably priced compared to even other ones that I found on Amazon and whatnot. So still got a little ways to go in here yet. Um, not sure if it's going to come all the way to the edge here or I'm going to cut it off, you know, right at the stud line. But uh, so that's coming right along. I'm not going too crazy on soundproofing. Um, this is an open concept basement, as you can see. We have no door that goes to the upstairs. So I'm not going to get really crazy here with soundproofing, but um, if I ever needed to, you know, I could always add some more uh, insulation and stuff to the exterior. Um, kind of frame around the, the back of this box and add more insulation and drywall if I ever deemed necessary in the future. So that's where we're at here. Um, I have two outlets. You got one here and one on the other side. Those are going to be subwoofer outlets. And those outlets themselves are actually a Panamax outlet that's surge protected. Uh, I found those on Amazon as well. I'll try and drop a link to those also. I don't remember the specific details there, but um, they offered some pretty good protection. So I figured it's better to do that than nothing. And those are attached to my dedicated 20 amp circuit. And uh, thanks to Youth Man, one of his recent uh, home theater tours, I saw that he had some switches that would turn the subwoofers on and on, on and off. So I figured I would steal that design and that way I don't have to move the screen or figure out a different way to turn them off and on. And I can simply flip a switch for one breaker, flip a switch for the other one and control each, or excuse me, not breaker, outlet that's uh, behind the screen there. So I'll be able to individually control those. So. As you can see, now that they're on, I have power to the outlets. I think the only other thing electrical is you will see, this is that other side of the plug that goes to the projector um, total of those two separate outlets. So um, a little extension cord will plug into the back of whatever power conditioner or surge protector that I decide to go with, connect into there, and then it runs Romex up through to the projector box over there, and that way those outlets will be protected as well. And then we have our uh, rack location. I don't think this was shown on the last video either, so uh, wanted to get it up off the ground a little bit. Um, it does attach to a wall 
Um, you lose some weight rating. So since this is all unfinished and out of sight, out of mind anyway, I just added a little platform and that way it's not completely hanging. Um, it can retain its, its full weight limits at this point. So um, work in progress back here, but as you can see, there's plenty of room if I ever needed to insulate above, behind, below that uh, subwoofer cavity there. So um, we'll see what happens, I guess, as it comes out. But had to raise the uh, cold air intake, the cold air return. That used to be at the bottom of this run, but that's where that uh, right channel ended up being. So other than that, uh, here's the other end of the Smurf tube that runs to the projector box. So still got to clean that up and, and get that ran. But I think that's the updates as far as the front wall goes and, and cavity there. So really other than some electrical and some uh, front wall work, um, getting the HVAC work done here this coming Wednesday. So all that will be done. Um, we're getting really close. Um, got some more electrical work down where the ladder is down there. I still got to run a dedicated circuit to the bar. We're waiting for the bar design to come back so that we can approve it and figure out where our outlets are going to go there. Um, but otherwise, uh, this, this bedroom that's going to be back here and, and this room as well are all wired. You can see I got the can lights in, um, fan mount in the middle there. All the outlets are installed and ripped out, ready to go. So electrical is probably 95% done. Um, I have a little tiny bit of plumbing to run over to the, to the bar for the wet bar over there by the ladder, but everything else is coming right along. And then we're getting some quotes for drywall, waiting on a couple of those to come in and pretty quick here, we will be ready to start insulating and kind of going from there. So I think that's all for now. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm still trying to decide uh, grill speaker cloth on like the right or speaker cloth off on the left. Same speaker, just cloth on or off. If you have any preferences, let me know in the comments what you think. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next update.